something for me here? Testing. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, Sixty-nine is mighty fine, but but I like Oreos. <laughs> now, what is the Oreo? Oreos? Oh, around here, around here, it's not Oreos. The girls call them Oreos. You know, everything, everything at the Bunny Ranch is, is ho. Let's go see a ho show. You know, it's ho time. It's show time. It's every, everything's ho. And when a when a girl goes to another girl's room, because she might be having sex in there. But they don't knock. Management knocks. The girls ho scratch. They scratch the door with their nails. That way, if you're having sex, it really doesn't interfere with you. And the girl will say, "Busy," or "Come on in, I need you." <laughs> you know, one or the other. So, I did not know about the scratch. A... Well, ho scratch is a, is a part of the um, bunny ranch vernacular. Are there any other words, that, any other funny word, uh, funny vernaculars that, that you think the uh, the average viewer at home would appreciate to be able to use in their everyday conversation? Well, bunny style, you know, bunny style is, is like dog style, except the bunny is originating, and so it's 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 bunny style. You know, we also have the freak of the week uh, uh, <coughs> party, and and every family should have that. You sit down and you decide something you haven't done. Let's get a little freaky. Let's raise the bar, you know, and uh, let's be a little silly. And that's how you keep your man happy. And that's why the bunnies know how to do these things, and typically the civilian chicks don't. These good bunnies don't say no. Very seldom. I mean, all girls have their limits, but the bunny girls have higher limits. And so typically they don't say no. Air Force Amy will tell you that the way to keep your man is don't say no. And even if you don't do what he wants, don't say no. Because once you get into it, a girl can lead the party in any direction she wants it to go, and she can make a, a man have an orgasm pretty much when she wants to. Now, you, you said, now, I, I guess after the after, after encountering Millie here, pretty much the bar's been raised pretty high, I'm guessing, from her former video activities. Well, Mila, you know, Mila, the, the queen of nasty, uh, she takes uh, porn to a whole other level. She won the Nasty Award every year, Nastiest Chick in Porn, because she does crazy things. I've seen her do an eight-color art piece that was amazing by, by taking uh, toxic paint, kids' tox uh, non-toxic paint, and, and putting it inside of her and squirting it out all over there. I mean, Calder, Picasso would be jealous. It's beautiful, beautiful artwork. I've got one somewhere. I need to, I need to put it on the wall out here. No. Now, how many how many people do you, do you often get now people from the porn world coming over to, to do guest I guess guest guest visits at the place? We've had now uh, we've been here 16 years and um, we've had now over 700 porn girls here. There's three or four here right now. Mila is here. Uh, you, you got uh, Jasmine is here. Uh, you, you've got Anna Mills. There's always three or four. Sunny Lane's coming in in the next week. Sunset Thomas worked here, lived with me. Terry Weigel. It's some, some, some big stars and, and lots of them. You know, the porn business is uh, drying up a little bit. And as that happens, and the girls know that they can make money here. They can, all, they can always make more money here than in porn. It's like 10 times the money. What porn gives them is, is uh, some instant notoriety. The parties in LA that are really not much fun but they, they get invited, they feel like a princess because all the fans are there. And, and here, uh, the, the fans come to us. Uh, the exception is the girls that are part of, uh, part of the, uh, the blonde squad or the media team and, that are rolling with me. You know, then we're at the Emmys and we're, and we're at the Grammys and the billboards and we're backstage at every rocker and rapper's concert. We're at the, premieres, uh, the premiere of movies. Um, we're everywhere. Those girls get giant notoriety. And do you, do you feel kind of in a way that you're, you're, you're the bookend to half at this moment when you show up with your three blondes? Absolutely. You know, when, when we're at the Fox Reality Awards, you get this beautiful stage and a theater, all the tables in the middle, Survivor here, Pete Diddy's Girls, Flavor Flav, all the different shows that are out there. And on one side, in a little orchestra area, elevated about three feet, uh, is Hefner and his girls, and me and my girls, and my bitch Ron Jeremy. You know, so we're there, and we're like the... Uh, the new image, uh, the new nouveau hip sex people, you know, and, and not that we're that young, but we're younger than half. 
And so, uh, and we've got the hot young girls with us, and, um, and, and my girls switch up, so I've always got different girls with me, and, uh, and he's got the same three girls. I've got, it's nice that he's got three girlfriends, three wives, if you will, but how can he be with them forever? You know, it's like having three new Mercedes and driving the same three the rest of your life. I don't want to do it. I'm glad he can. He's mad enough to do it. God bless him, but I'm not. Now, do you also feel that it's kind of it's it's kind of odd because let's face it, the the three blonde the, the three women that you bring to the party, if anybody at home goes, ooh, I'd like to have a chance with her, well, just come on down. That's the that's the beauty of it. When when you watch have show, and uh, you're not going to have sex with those girls, you, you may masturbate to their centerfolds. And that's nice, but I don't like self service, and, and and most people in America don't. So, our clients, our friends can watch our TV show, see us at an awards show, and say, wow, that Air Force Amy is looking really good. I'm going to go to the Bunny Ranch. That, and that's what, that's what the, the success of our show is, is that finally these are goals that are attainable for the average man. He, he doesn't have to just look at the show. He, he, it heightens his sexuality and, and his desire by watching the show and going, whoa, you know what? I'm going there. So it gives him something to think about, something to plan for. And he's got all these things in, 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 in his mind because sometimes the, the travel is almost as good as the destination. You know, it's, it's the planning, the thinking about it, the anticipation, and all the things that, that go with going on a trip. It happens to be this is a sex trip, you know, maybe a round the world trip with a bunny. Now, how, how has the show changed your clientele? The show has changed my clientele in a lot of ways. Number one, we are the de-virginizing center of America. This is where people bring the virgins now. You know, instead of these guys scrounging around and trying to get some in high school or college and, and getting the girl pregnant and going through all that, the parents say, no, you need some lessons, son. Remember when we took you to driving school? Remember? You're a good driver now, aren't you? We're going to take you to Bunny Ranch Sex School and we're going to teach you about girls. So you'll know what to do when you get that beautiful princess in your life. Because if not, it, it's, it's a terrible experience. She has no experience. He has no experience. And, and that's, that's a recipe for like the worst sex in the world. And it, and it just won't last long. So the virgins come here. Couples. We're, we're now seeing an enormous influx of couples. Because we had the nerve to show that couples really do these kind of things. Where in the past, you know, the, the only thought was, oh, there was some whacked out a swinger somewhere doing these things in these scungy places and all that. It's not like that. And, uh, and but we're, we showed it. We had the nerve to show it. Lots of couples come in. We had to. We had the nerve to show a 60-year-old woman coming in here. Her husband couldn't perform any longer, and she still had these sexual desires. And so he told her to come to the bunny ranch. Here's the money. Go to the bunny ranch. So she. We caught her on camera interacting with another girl. These. These are giant changes. Not not only not only in prostitution, but in sexuality in America, we've made it okay. It's okay to bring your virgin here. It's okay for couples to come here, because they were always doing threesomes. The wife just didn't know about it. Now, where it used to be, the guy would come in and and uh, and, and pick Air Force Amy and and uh, and uh, Bunny Love and have this killer threesome. Now he brings his wife and and they have a threesome with one of them. And later on, they have a threesome with the other one. So. That's really changing. And you know, we've single-handedly made it okay to, to sell and have sex in America. And we change people's ideas a day at a time. You know, and David Tell, the comedian, said it, Bunny Ranch, one cock at a time. And it's so true. One person at a time, we win them over. And even if they don't want to participate in what we do, and a lot of people don't, then that's great. But it's okay for the ones that do want to, because they'll say, "Wow, yeah, that place is cool." If, if, if we weren't married, honey, I, I'd go there. And she's like, "Yeah, if we weren't married, I'd go there." You know. And so the friends, the single guy or the married guy that likes to cheat on his old lady, or or, or with his permission, it's okay. They don't look down and like, "Oh, you, you you bought a hooker." Those days are done. We don't need that, except in the illegal world.